Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of doing an LDU factorization. Let's consider the matrix. A, which is 1, 0, negative 2, 1, 0, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 0, and then negative 2, negative 2, 1, negative 3. Let's find the L, D, U, decomposition. Okay, so we're going to do Gaussian elimination on A and store all of our elementary row operations on the left-hand side. So let's do it. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take A, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to do this matrix over here, 1, 0, 0, then negative 3, 1, 0, then a what? then a 0, 0, 1. That's an elementary operation. We're going to do negative 3 row 1 plus row 2. If I apply that to a, what will we get? We'll get a 1, 0, negative 2. Then we'll have a 0 over here, a negative 1 over here, and then finally a what? Then I'll have a negative 6 over here, a positive 6, and then a negative 2, a 1, and then a negative 3. Okay? And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to call this matrix over here E1 for my first elementary matrix, and I need to get rid of that 2, so I'm going to do the following. Then I'm going to do 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and then I'm going to do a 2, 0, 1, and that's going to be 2, row 1, plus row 2, row 1, plus row 3, and what will that give me? Apply to E1A, it's going to be this matrix over here, it's going to be a 1, 0, negative 2, a 0, negative 1, and then a 6. And then finally, I'm going to have a what? Finally, we will have a 0 over here, by assumption. Then nothing adds, adds the 1 over here. Then I've added 2 of that to this, so that's going to be a negative 4 over here. Then it's going to turn to a negative 7. Great. And then the last thing I'm going to call this matrix over here E2, right? And so now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 1 of row 2 plus row 3. So how are we going to do that? We're going to say that this is going to be exactly equal to 1, 0, 0, a 0, 1, 0, and a 0, 1, 1 over here. That will add row 2 to row 3. In doing so, I'm going to do this to E2, and then E1, and then A. And then what will happen over here? This is going to turn into a 1, 0, negative 2, a 0, a negative 1, and a 6 over here. And finally, a 0, a 0, and then I have a 6 plus negative 7, that's a negative 1 over here. Great. And now, of course, this is an upper triangular matrix over here. This is upper triangular. So my matrix over here, U. And so we've just shown, is we've just shown the following. So I'm going to call this actually probably U tilde, right? I'm going to pull up that negative 1 to make it diagonalizable. So what we have over here is now we have, I'm going to call this E3, E3. So we have that E3, E3, E2, E1, A is equal to this matrix over here, U, which allows me to write A as what? The first thing I'm going to hit it with is an E3 inverse. That's going to be an E1 inverse, E2 inverse, E3 inverse, hit with U over there. And this matrix over here is going to be my L, right? And we can easily extract out those inverse are because these are elementary matrices, right? So what my L is, is our L is going to be this matrix over here. It's going to be E1 inverse. So E1 inverse is going to be a 1, 0, 0, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And that's going to be hit with E2 inverse. E2 inverse is going to be a 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 2, 0, 1. And then finally over here, the E3 inverse, E3 inverse is going to be a 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1. And so let's do this out over here and figure out what the L is going to be. So the L is going to be what? Well, let's do it slowly, right? 3, 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 1. And what's going to happen over here? We're going to have a 1. I'm going to multiply the first row by itself. So that's going to be a 1, 0, 0, like that. Then we're going to have a what? Then we're going to have a 0, a 1, and a 0. A 0, a 1, and a 0 over there. And then finally, we're going to have a what? We're going to have a negative 2. So a negative 2 down over here. And then what? We'll have a negative 2, then a negative 1, and then what? Negative 2, then a negative 1, then a 1. 
And we can see over here, what did I just do to this matrix over here? I just did negative two the first row times this thing. So the first two rows stayed the same. I just did negative two of the one got shifted down to there. So I could have done it much faster had I just thought about the row operations, right? What's going to happen over here? We're going to have a one over here, a zero over here, and a zero over here, because it has to be lower triangular, so I need to see those zeros up there, right? Then we're going to have a what? If we do this slowly, we'll have a three over here, right? Then we'll have a what? Then we'll have a one over here. Then we'll have a what? Then we'll have a zero over here. Again, my lower triangular force that to happen. We'll have a negative two over here. Then we'll have a negative one over here. Then we'll have a one over here, like so. That's my lower triangular matrix L. That's my L, okay? And so now the final step is to put this all together, right? And to put this all together, we need a diagonal matrix in the middle. So what can we conclude from this over here? We can conclude that A is my lower triangular matrix, my one, zero, zero, three, one, zero, negative two, negative one, one. That's my lower triangular matrix. Then I'm gonna write as a diagonal matrix, so I'm gonna do over here, and I'm gonna write this as a one, zero, 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 negative one, to make turn that into a one over here. Zero, 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 negative one. And that will have the effect of taking everything and making it negative, right? So what we'll have over here is the first row is not gonna change. Negative two. The third row, the second row is gonna become negative, right? So it's gonna turn to a zero, a one, and then a negative six, and then a zero, and then a zero, and then a positive one over here, right? And so that's my upper triangular matrix. Now I have a diagonal matrix, an upper triangular matrix, and a lower triangular matrix. Now, typically what's going to happen is that it won't be as nice in general, and so typically what will happen with you is you're going to, you might have like a 4 over here and a 6 over here. You pull a 4 over here and a 6 over here out, and you divide everything else by 4 and 6 respectively. So this is our L, D, U, decomposition. This is our L, D, U, decomposition. And so this, of course, is very useful when you're solving systems of equations because you're cutting down the total number of operations when you're doing this process by looking at, you can look at like L applied to X is equal to some number, if AX is equal to B, you can say that u applied to x is equal to some number y, and then l applied to y is equal to b, and so you can solve these systems much more quickly if you write the LU decomposition. Thank you very much.